Now we're going to explore the style maker. Styles, of course, are the files that end in STY, and they're always the files that are appearing in this list here. Of course, you can load in styles a lot, a lot of different ways. Uh, you can load them in from the F9 key, uh, which is a button on the screen, and these are the styles that can be purchased with Man in a Box. There's, I think, about 270 of them at the moment, and there's other ways to load them in, like the 24 styles that were originally done with Man in a Box are loadable on this menu here. These numbers that you hear, see uh, here are the file extension that appears. We've got 270 styles now. The first 24 that we made had their own custom extension uh, applied to them. So Jazz Swing would have one, Country 12.8 would have two, etc. Once we got past 24, they're all named U. So in other words, if you look, if you press the open key and you see a U at the end of this, it means it's in a user-defined style, which is one of the, of the other ones. But if you see this one, it's done in style number five, which is ethnic. One uh, practical advantage of this is that if you choose one of the built-in styles and then choose file open filtered by style or just press the F7, you see just a list of the songs in that style. Of course, if you have a user-defined style loaded into memory um, and press the F7 key, you'll get a list of just the user-defined styles, which is probably most of the uh, uh, demo songs. But it is very useful if you are somebody who stores a lot of songs in the built-in styles. Now, let's have a look. We'll, we'll load in one of the styles like uh, the Winton K style. And let's have a look at what, number one, what that style uh, looks like if you wanted to edit it. In general, editing um, styles is something that most people using Ban in a Box wouldn't need to do. Uh, it's analogous to owning a synthesizer and wanting to program your own sounds. Probably most people don't need to do it. But if you press Control shift 9 you can edit this style. And it launches something called the Style Maker, which is a new uh, window and a new part of Band in a Box. So these are the various instruments that are available in Band in a Box. So within a style you can create drums, you can create bass, you can create piano, you can create guitar, and you'll notice that this is blank indicating there's no guitar in this style and there's also happens to be no strings in this uh, particular style. So uh, let's have a look at the various components of a pre-made style. First of all, this is uh, drums and you can see that there are two sub-styles in Band in a Box, A and B. The A pattern for the drums will all be on this row and these are all various drum patterns. The B patterns are on this row, drum fills are on this row, and the drum ending, which is a special two-bar phrase, is on this row. Now, drums are done differently than all the rest of the instruments. For drums, each pattern indicates one bar. It's always a one-bar phrase. For these other instruments, the length of the pattern is governed by what you see here. This would be a pattern lasting eight beats, which is two bars or this is patterns lasting four beats. Now you might ask what the um, criteria is for the length of the pattern. This is referring to the chord that is entered into band in a box. For example, if we have a song that's like this with these sort of chords, band in a box will take a style and for this it'll say okay we're in the A sub style and we're on a C chord and it lasts four beats so then it will go to whatever style it is and say for the bass part it will say I'm in A sub style I have a chord lasting four beats I'm going to play one of these patterns so then it, then it will have to choose which pattern to play okay so now we wonder uh, how does it choose these patterns, which I'll show you how to enter, they all have a weight assigned to them. And you can see they're almost all at five. If they were all at five, it will weight them all at five, and it will randomly pick between one of these um, uh, uh, style uh, patterns. You can see that 
there is a special setting uh, that this can range from 1 to 9. So obviously whoever made this style didn't particularly like this pattern much and didn't want to hear it much. 9 is a special weight that is um, means that that pattern will always be played. So on this phrase, which would be a two beat pattern, which would be one that would be selected when we're on a chord like this, this person making this bass pattern has requested that this pattern always be played. So you might wonder, there's all these patterns and if this one's all going to be played, what's the purpose of all the rest of them? The fact is that this pattern would be set with options which you can see by pressing the, uh, uh, the option here. And you can see that this pattern has a special filter applied to it which means that uh, it's, it's only going to play this pattern when there's a two beat pattern and the same root is uh, being applied to the next chord. So in other words, it's not a chord going up a fourth, it's not going down a fourth, it's a chord with the same root. So this pattern, for example, when we um, showed you this example here, this is G seventh going to A minor seventh. That's going up a semitone, so that's not staying on the same root. So this pattern will not be played in that particular uh, circumstance. This pattern will be played when it's something like G seventh going to G minor seventh or G seventh just going to another G seventh if there was another G seventh typed in two beats later. So that's the point of doing the weights of nine. They'll, these things will always be played. So it, you can have a look now at, at the various patterns and you can see that these ones are all five so they're all uh, created uh, treated equally. If there's nothing for a two beat pattern it means that band in a box will just use whatever patterns are up on the 8 beat row. Similarly, if there's nothing for a B sub style, band in a box will just use whatever is there for the uh, A sub style. So now we can have a look at actually editing these patterns. For the drums, if you press the record button, uh, the drums are done in step time, so you'll see this grid screen here. We have a time base of 12. Uh, if we press the button, we change the time base to 16. This is a jazz style, so the time base is 12, meaning these are four beats of triplets. And these are, this is beat one, two, three, and four. These are all velocities. If we press play, we can hear what this pattern is. So you can hear the ride cymbal. You can, you can hear the uh, closed hi-hat and the uh, snare drum. So, you know, just for purposes of demonstration, I can either type the exact velocity I want, 98, or I can use the bottom row of the QWERTY keyboard, which is Z, X, C, V, B, etc. The whole bottom row will pump in uh, some velocity numbers. And typically when you're making a style, that's what you do. Just use the bottom row. And so now we would have one with a crash symbol. So that's something that you're obviously not going to put as a main uh, pattern in a jazz style, but you can certainly maybe do it for a, a drum fill and, you know, reduce the velocity and that sort of thing. So if you press the Z key or type zero, you'll, of course, blank it out. And so you can type in, you know, uh, if you wanted the ride symbol to do a, a triplet here, you know, you can use these sort of things. And another feature of this is you might you might say, I only want this to be played some of the time, so we can put an alternate in, and we can say 70% of the time I want it to play uh, nothing. So we can say an alternate note number of zero. Um, you could put a, 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 a crash symbol just for demonstration purposes. We'll say 70% of the time play a crash symbol with a velocity of 100. This is not a particularly musical pattern, but at least uh, you can see that uh, what will happen. See, some of the time it's doing it and some of the time it isn't. So within a pattern you can have alternate notes which uh, can be used to 
give you an actual alternate note or if you put in zero it will just mean that 70% of the time it will be more or less silent over that thing. See some of the times it plays it and some of the time it doesn't. And these alternate notes are marked with a red bar around them and if you press the F5 key you can uh, set them all to zero and then you'd get rid of the uh, red bar because there's no alternate notes. Of course there's help uh, available on the style maker as there is for other areas of band in a box and you can uh, read read up more on this in the help uh, which says some of the things that we've been talking about here. Now if we exit this it'll ask us for the relative weight. Now in general you can use uh, a 5 for uh, all, the t all the time. Uh, the only time you use a 9 is if you want it to always be played which only, I mean, should be used with caution. You, if you're using a 9, it'll have to have some other filters applied to it, otherwise you're going to always hear that pattern. Now, uh, this has a, a special, um, uh, uh, you can request that this pattern always be played on bar 1 of 4, 2 of 4, 3 of 4, or 4 of 4. In that way, you can make a drum pattern that lasts really 4 uh, bars and the way you would do that is make four patterns in succession and assign this one to bar one of four and then make the next one and assign it to bar uh, two of four etc. Um, this uh, because this isn't a drum fill line this one's not applicable and late triplets are something that applies to jazz swing uh, drumming in particular and it just affects that third triplet if it's going to be played a little late which typically is, is, is done by, uh, by drummers. So there we have our patterns and you can use some of the th features like copy and then paste to, to create an additional one and you can press the option or use the F3 key to you know work on something and uh, type in some new velocities and that sort of thing. Right, so here's the uh, B patterns and then we can get to drum fills which if we press play so there's some drum fills that have been put into this style. So now you have a rough idea of what the uh, drums look like. Now the bass is done uh, totally differently and all the rest of the instruments are done differently to the drums meaning that they are played in from a MIDI keyboard. Um, here is, um, if you press play you'll hear exactly what this pattern is. And if you look at the green note here on the um, uh, keyboard you can hear it. What we're hearing is a two bar pattern. They're always recorded in the length of two bars. And so you'll have to listen for a two bar pattern at a tempo of one, two, three, four, and it's repeating. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four. So you can see a root and fifth, and it does a little figure at the end there. So that's what that pattern is. Now, if you wanted to see this uh, in notation, this is a new feature found in, uh, in version um, uh, seven, which is that you can see this pattern in, in actual notation. Uh, root, fifth, root, fifth, and there is the pattern and you can press any of these uh, notation buttons and actually see the durations of the notes. The implication being of course you can edit these uh, just like a regular notation thing so if you wanted um, this to be uh, a li uh, you know longer or you want to change the duration you could use the right mouse button to uh, to drag the duration you could insert uh, notes um, or move move notes around. For example, if you want that if you want that to be up on the uh, uh, instead of root and fifth, then you could um, do that, and then you'll have it. So um, there you have um, there you have that pattern. So you can close the uh, style editor in 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 this situation. Now here's the piano part and the guitar and the strings and uh, similarly you can press the play button and see what was played on the, on the piano. Now the piano is done differently. The piano is done always on a C7 chord. So you can, uh, you can have a look at what the piano's uh, been doing and um,
there we go this is the um, piano um, this is the piano part that was being played by the uh, piano and you can edit that in notation as well this will be covered in greater detail when we actually make a style we're just taking a survey of the of what you can do another uh, quick and dirty thing you can do is take the um, take the style and import an instrument so we can import the strings from any other style and that let's import the strings from um, from a style called uh, country 12 so we've now we've created a style that is the Winton K style but it has the strings from another style now you can see that the strings there's patterns here in the B section and you can see that there's one lone pattern there and you'll find that that pattern is a um, a blank pattern that's something that's important to remember if you just want strings on the B style you have to create a blank pattern in this one uh, so that it knows to play nothing if you just left this totally blank it would adopt the patterns of this so um, here you'll hear no strings and on this one you'll hear strings which are these two notes here once again on a C seventh chord so now it'd be a good idea that we press save as because we don't want to overwrite this and we can save it as uh, Winton and strings so now we've got a, a jazz style that has strings on it so here we uh, go with our new style and we're uh, set to set to try it out one the useful feature of band in a box is okay to load style with song if you set no it's not okay to load the style with the song whatever song you load in will adopt the um, the new uh, the new song but not the um, will preserve this style so we can play any song in our new style so we're expecting strings to uh, to happen on the uh, on the bridge of this song so uh, why don't we uh, get them happening a little bit earlier in the demo So that's probably the quickest way to make a new style is just to import instruments from other styles and, and mix and match them together. Of course, you might want to uh, create your own style from scratch. So let's do that. User, new, make a new style. And we'll call this one a new one. So here we're faced with a blank uh, worksheet. So obviously you need to know a little bit about music to know what uh, constitutes a style and etc cetera, etc cetera. but let's go to a blank pattern let's make this an even uh, 16th note style and using the bottom row of keys starting with the Z we can start putting in numbers here and I can put in uh, uh, numbers for the uh, bass drum and we're going to have an even hi-hat pattern here and just clicking on these various notes on the bottom of the QWERTY keyboard we can play this that's a pretty standard uh, rock rock beat and we'll say let's make this last note uh, using this alternate button let's say 30% um, of the time we'll have it playing an open hi-hat at a velocity of a hundred so if we play this we may or may not get it yeah it took a few times but it's there so uh, thirty percent of the time we'll get that and and so now let's choose edit copy and edit paste and now on the B pattern we're going to um, 
do the same thing except we want these all to be uh, ride symbols instead of uh, closed hi-hats. So we'll use the Z, which is the zero, and the cursor keys and just blank out all these ones. We got to get rid of this alternate note here and put all those to zeros and then we'll find our ride symbol line and do the same sort of thing uh, here. Of course you could always start with, you didn't have to start with a style from scratch, you could start with one, uh, just import the drums from another uh, style using the style import, but we're creating one from scratch here. Now we'll, we'll choose edit copy and edit paste and we'll set, you know, uh, we could set this to put in, uh, uh, you know, uh, some uh, tom fills or something like, uh, something like that, just randomly see. Uh, get rid of that one just to, or uh, we could uh, probably be better to put in some snare drums uh, going like this and get rid of this tom. Okay, so we've added, we've made our little fill here, and here we would say that this should be an A sub style fill, and now we'll take the B pattern, copy it, and paste it, and edit it, and we'll do a same little trick with the, uh, with the uh, snare drum, and maybe we'll say, you know, 50% of the time, don't do don't do that last one there and then we've got so we've we've created one with an A pattern a B pattern and a couple of fills now we're going to go to the um, to the base before we do that we have to remember we should assign patches and uh, you can show the patch list here to get the numbers and we'll we'll want to assign this to what they call finger base which is patch 34 we're going to be uh, using patch 5, which is Rhodes, the drum patch of 1. Uh, we can put strings in, which is patch 49. And we may as well put in a nylon guitar, which is patch 25. And now we're going to go to the bass. Now the bass, we're recording on a C 7th C chord. I'll just, go over to, I'll just go over to my piano here. You'll notice that I'm playing the patterns. Uh, for bass, I'm playing at an octave up. That's because if you look in our options MIDI channels, you're going to see that the bass on the sound canvas anyway needs to be down an octave. So we need to record it uh, an octave up and then it'll go down. If you have any trouble with that, remember there is a pattern transpose that can fix something that you've recorded. But bass is the only one that we need to record up. So basically it's a rock thing and we're going to be playing we're going to be playing a pattern like this. Now when we press record, we're going to be recording a two bar pattern and it's going to give us a two bar intro. So we don't want to play anything during the two bar intro and uh, we want to just wait two bars, give us time to get over to our keyboard and then we're going to record a two bar pattern on a C7 chord. So here we go, press record. Two, two, three, four. Okay, that's done and we can just leave that recorded. We can choose pattern quantize which alt Q is a much faster thing and, and quantize that. Now we can hear it and you can hear it down an octave which the bass needs to be and we can hear what will that sound like on, a, on various chords. Uh, let's pick a B minor 7 flat 5 and you can hear the fifth is changing. So that's the value of entering on a C7 chord is that band in a box keys in on that. Now we've added the bass and we're going to, which is just a single pattern, and we're just going to record the piano now. The piano is going to be based, it's a Fender Rhodes sound, it's going to be based on a C7 chord of course, so we want it to be more or less a pad type of piano and, and nothing very rhythmical and we'll be playing it on a C7 chord in a fairly meaty area of the keyboard here. So we re press record and wait our two bars and now we come with, in with this and that's done. And you'll notice it doesn't show up as you record due to the design nature of the style maker. It's not going to show up until afterwards. So here's all our options for piano. 
relative weight f is 5, which is fine. In general, this is a pretty generic pattern that we've recorded. It doesn't require any special chord type, or we, we're not telling it to only play if it's the uh, you know Roman numeral number 1, or if it's uh, only play if it's a flat 5 chord or something like that. So um, here we go with the uh, important setting, which is we'd like this to be smoothly voice-led. And if you're doing a pattern that's uh, notes played around here on a C chord, and we went to a F chord, would we want the whole pattern to be more or less transposed up there, or would we want it to be smoothly voice-led, which would mean that the B flat would change to an A, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that it would still be played. So given that it's a backing pattern, yes, we would want this to be uh, smoothly voice-led. So here's what the pattern sounds like as played. And here's what it sounds like on a few different chords, a D minor. And here's what it sounds like on an F6, and it should be smoothly voice-led, which it is. That B flat went to a A, etc., all the way down the all the way down. And let's pick a strange one like C7. Band in a Box uh, has some rules of its own, and one of the rules is that C7 sus, it particularly likes that ninth, so you'll probably get that whether you ask for it or not. Uh, there's a few things uh, just to avoid some dissonant intervals. For example, on C major 7th, we might give you the ninth in s to avoid that flat 9 interval. These are just musical things that Band in a Box is doing on its own. So this is just one pattern that would take care of it. Now that we've recorded a pattern, let's copy it using Edit Copy and then choose Paste. So we'll copy the same pattern and Control V, of course, is a faster way of doing paste. We could have just left it with this one pattern, but if we want to record custom ones for each row, uh, it's, it's a good idea to use this same one because we think it'll be applicable. So for the four beat one, we, we might want a pattern for the piano that starts on this chord and then it and then does its little arpeggio at the end of four beats, unlike this one that does its arpeggio at the end of eight beats. So let's see about recording that. First we're going to save the style. It's always a good idea to save the style periodically. So now we'll press record. Okay, so there we recorded the um, pattern and did our little arpeggio at the end of beat four, which one, two, three, four. Okay, so then that, if it's doing a four beat pattern, it'll do the arpeggio at the end. So this one we would have to do the same thing and put the arpeggio at the end of beat two. Let's play that one. Right, so then it'll have a nice uh, smooth uh, introduction to the next chord. Now for the guitar, we're going to just do a very simple guitar thing, which is just doing a little tritone here in a rhythmical uh, fashion. So here we go. Let's play that one. Now we'll do another one just like it. Let's record another one. Yeah, I, the idea is to record several patterns and make them all about the same feel, but just slight variations. Now we could record custom ones for the for each of the uh, ones, but in this case, I think the ones for the eight beat will suffice. Maybe I'll record a couple of custom ones for the two beat line so that uh, when chords last two beats, we, the guitar player won't wait till uh, the uh, second beat to play his chord. So it'll give some variation. Right, so here we've got 
if you'll notice there's smooth voice leading assigned to all these uh, patterns by pressing the uh, options button you can confirm that that setting stays so now we've got everything all we need is strings of course it'd be easy to just import strings from another style that has them but let's record strings ourselves so we press record and we're doing the a sub style strings which is nothing so I'm not plus need a blank pattern there. So there we've got a blank pattern for the A sub style and now we need the B sub style st strings. Now the easiest way is to remember that strings are going to be up in this range of the keyboard and I, I like to use a tritone here typically for strings. So let's record the strings. Two, two, three, four. Here's that strings pattern. So pretty, pretty simple, straightforward. Um, now there's n some options here, which is adjust the volume of a pattern or the whole, all the patterns. So let's adjust the volume of that uh, strings because it seems like they're a little bit too loud. So we can type in a number. It's currently calculated the velocity as 58. So let's bring them down to about 35. So that we've done strings patterns. We've done guitar and the guitar had a custom one for the two beats and we've done piano we've only done an A but that means the B will also use it and we've done uh, drums so let's save that style exit the style maker and let's type in some chords C6 A minor 7th uh, uh, we'll go to say an F and then a G 7th and we get to this bar and I go Alt C to copy and we're gonna copy eight bars and then we're gonna set the end of the song to bar 16 and we're gonna put a little ending chord on it so let's see what it sounds like in the style that we've just created style because we have uh, of course put in a B sub style with strings and the middle choruses are always done in B sub style if you have this option to set it to be true. So you can you can listen to the guitar which is doing a little variations here. So now let's see what would happen if we put in some different chords uh, here uh, because this will trigger these two beat patterns that we've got in here and this would uh, trigger some of the four beat patterns we haven't done all that many customized ones but you know we can hear what's going to sound like nonetheless did that I'll play once again the guitar did those patterns we did based on two beat patterns which is which were the patterns with the guitar starting right on beat one which is a good uh, feel for the thing so there was the uh, there was the demonstration of course we could save this song as a demo for our style and if we press control shift F9 we can get back into the style and uh, you know have a look at, uh, at what we've done at this point now we could add customized uh, patterns you could say hmm uh, let's see if you look at the options available we could create customized patterns for a C minor 7 flat 5 chord we could have a custom pattern so or, or a sus chord let's try that we're gonna record a custom pattern here uh, for an 8-beat sus chord so let's give that a try we press record R we're playing on a sus 7 now this one we want to set to a pattern 
which is a sus chord. Okay, so now we actually played it on a sus chord. When you set a pattern to be equal to uh, have a have a filter on it, you want to typically you want to set the weight to nine, so it will always play always when there is a sus chord in A sub style lasting eight beats. It will always play that. So let's save that style, and then we don't actually have to exit the style maker to hear the song. It would be nice if we put an actual sus chord in. So we'll put in a sus chord and make sure it lasts and we're, we want to make sure that we hear our, um, our pattern. So that's worked quite well. Let's hear it again and you're listening for the piano part. Did it play our customized pattern? There it is. create custom patterns. Typically, you know, if you were doing a blues style, you'd want the blues player to be doing all kinds of blues licks. You know, you could get them doing blues licks, but you'd, you wouldn't want those blues licks applied when there's a diminished chord or something like that. So that's the purpose of using these settings such as the chord type. And, you know, there's other settings like interval to any chord which you could create custom bass patterns going up a fourth down a fourth and that sort of thing so that covers um, that feature and then we can save that style and we've now got a style that we can use on uh, on any song you know you just uh, load in a, a, a random uh, song here and uh, because we have the user okay to load style with songs not set it will keep our our style in memory, and now it'll play uh, you know a country song here. Using our uh, our style that we made, and uh, I can hear one thing that we should have set in in this style. We should have set the options drum fill on style B sub style fill for that particular fill which is why we heard it there we only want that fill there so now if we pressed play we're gonna get an A sub style fill there yeah you heard this snare drum there so that's basically how to make a style the key things to remember is that uh, if you know you have the 8 beat line and the 4 beat line if you want to make a quick style just use the 8 bit beat line everything uh, that's not with any data it will always use the 8 beat line uh, the time to use the other ones is if you want to record custom uh, patterns for shorter chords